What's up guys, Grenade here. Welcome to another episode of uh, this is a tutorial, okay? So this is what I came up with for my brand new thumbnail. And as you noticed, uh, they're pretty cool looking. But um, if you want to do the Photoshop version of this tutorial, make sure to click on this annotation somewhere on the screen right now. And I'll have that video out as well. And it's basically the same thing, but I'm using GIMP, which is a free editing Photoshop thingy so Photoshop you know you, you can buy it or you can use other malicious ways but either way uh, GIMP is more bare bone because it is GIMP it is free it, they're not gonna make it really really um, amazing for something that's free right and uh, as for Photoshop Photoshop just completely blows GIMP out of the water but uh, I want to do sort of a free GIMP thing because a lot of you guys don't have the money to get Photoshop or don't want to do anything malicious or anything like that so um, I'm gonna show you guys today how to do this thumbnail so we're just gonna start by clicking on file new and then it's gonna ask us you know if we want to use a template and um, you know you don't have to but I usually just use 1280 by 720 hit OK and you got a blank canvas now at first I used this uh, I, I used to use GIMP when I first started YouTube I'm not gonna lie and some uh, I really did not know how to use it but now I can you know at least get Photoshop quality stuff without you know making it way too complicated so what we're gonna do now is that we're going to import files and it's very different from, from uh, Photoshop because in Photoshop you just go file open or not open as but file open and you import your stuff right well in this it's kind of the same way but you go to file open as layers it's gonna ask you I have a special folder for my thumbnails and we're gonna import these two things but we can only do one at a time as in Photoshop so we're gonna use the the back the background we're using dome from MW3 and dub you know we love that map now uh, what we're gonna do now is basically just start adding more stuff to it and uh, like in this uh, freaking thumbnail, I made the background black and white and I added a gradient of red or whatever color you decide to use. And you can, you know, you can go that route or you can go this route. But I'd rather not go this route because this is more Photoshop stuff and it, you can't really do this in GIMP. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. This is what I came up with, what I thought looks cool, and it's easy to do in GIMP. And you can do this over and over and over and save it and edit the text. So let's get started. Uh, let's get ready by using the paintbrush tool. And I want you guys to click on the, on the one that doesn't have as much hardness on it. And I don't know exactly. Uh, let's see. If I pick this one, it's pretty small. If I pick this one, this does not have any hardness at all, or it has a, too much hardness, I, I would say. And so I would go with the with this one that's kind of 50/50, and it gives you this look. And that's exactly what you want to aim for. Now, uh, just like in Photoshop, where you can uh, click over here in the new layer, hit OK and we got a new layer now you can change the color to the whatever you want um, I'm gonna do it like this because I like this little gradient or you can do a solid color so I'm gonna show you both rays both ways both ways real quick so if you want a solid color basically just you know kind of spray over the the layer and then make sure it, this is on the second layer you made and you want to go where it says mode and change it to grain merge and now it should look a little something like this and then you can move forward from that but I think it looks better with this gray that fades to red or whatever color you decide to use so what I'm gonna do is just the delete whatever's on there and the cool thing about GIMP is that it doesn't delete the, uh, the layer it just deletes uh, what's, whatever's on it so let's start by getting a gray and um, let's see I think this is fine all we're gonna do is just kinda color over it and I know we're still on that uh, grain merge um, overlay thing but we don't want to get on that we want to I believe it was overlay no let me scroll through these again to see which one it was um, oh there it was it was color so you want it to change to the color itself and you can touch up the picture if you want and you know it's gonna be zoomed out like when people look at your thumbnail it's not gonna be zoomed in like we are right now so these little details you can fix them but you know at the same time you can you're allowed to do a sloppy job but you know I don't like doing sloppy jobs so here we go um, after that I'm gonna add another layer 
and this will be the bottom layer I have in this over here so I'm going to go to the brush tool uh, same thing change it to instead of a red let me do a blue since I started that we're gonna click on the 50-50 well I, don't, I call it 50-50 because it's 50 hardness 50 softness or whatever and what I'm gonna do is just that and we're gonna go to grain merge and it looks sort of like that right and you can add more little blue stuff like that and then after that as you can see I had it going up to the tank go like that and what I'm gonna do now is just start importing the uh, the sniper whatever you're gonna use so I'm assuming that most of you guys are Call of Duty people or at least I don't know you like to snipe whatever right but you know if you don't want if you don't like sniping or don't like doing any of that stuff and you just want to make a cool thumbnail you can you know change this uh, sniper rifle for maybe anything you're doing on your oops let's not do that let's make sure we clicked on the sniper layer and uh, as I was saying you can basically use this with anything but you know I guess most of my viewers are COD or first person oriented so you can use this uh, to put it on there and what we're gonna do is that we're gonna click on we're gonna make a brand new layer and we're gonna make this uh, sniper rifle pop so by we by doing that we need to click on the sniper rifle go to select by color and then just click on everything but as you can see as I move my mouse it selects everything you want to select everything like that and then you want to go to layer number two uh, if this should still be selected and go to the brush tool change this to maybe a grayish sort of color like that bam and then we want to change the a mode to whatever looks best so we're just gonna scroll through these and the objective is to get the sniper rifle to pop or to look a bit more HD like I don't know how to explain that but um, I think in the other one I used this one pretty sure I did yeah something like that and it just you know goes along with this black and white background but you could easily just you know change this for maybe a yellow color if you wanted to I don't know why you'd go with yellow but and to get rid of the selection you want to go to select and none which is kind of annoying or you can do the little shortcut I'm not used to this program so I do everything manually and uh, let's start with the text as well as you can see we're gonna well you don't need to add a new layer but um, in this I try to make it look better I tried adding a stroke to it but it didn't really work out for me because you know it, it's not it's it's not like an option here in Photoshop if you double click on something like over here you can add a stroke or here it is stroke and that is just what makes this pop a little bit more but you can't do that with the text or the gun so what I decided to do is kinda like fool your brain into thinking that this is a 3d text and by doing that you get this little look so how I did that was by adding a text layer and you can make it as big as you want. I usually make it so that it covers a little bit of the sniper rifle. I don't know. I just like it when it does that. And we're going to go to, let's see. I'll just do the same thing. Your text and just here at the bottom. You can just change this to whatever you want. And I'm going to make the white first. You can change the colors. I, I kept it white. Excuse me. I, I kept it white, but uh, you can change it to whatever you like. Um, I the font I'm gonna use is build or something like that. What's it called? Built titling bold or whatever. I'll leave a link to the text in the description down below. I think I've taught you guys how to install um, fonts like a thousand times. So uh, if you need help installing fonts, I'll have a link to that in the description down below as well. And um, I think that's big enough. Um, let's do 180. I think that looks fine. As you can see, there's your text. What we're going to do is that we're going to duplicate that text and we're going to change this to a black or gray or something, uh, whatever you decide to choose. And we're going to shift it this way. And then we're going to put the white text on top or the, the black one on bottom, either way. And uh, just kind of move it to where it kind of makes this 3D look. It's not 3D, but it looks 3D, right? 
And same thing goes for if you want to add a text on the bottom, like in this one, I added the here part. Uh, let's go ahead and do that just to uh, learn how to do that. So we're gonna make a big one, uh, type in here, and we're gonna change this to built. You can, you know, theoretically use any font, but I like this built text because it's great for thumbnails. People can actually read what, whoa. Okay, that's a little bit too much. But as I was saying, this text or uh, font is pretty good for thumbnails because people can actually read what you're trying to put out in the thumbnail. And I keep doing that. I keep grabbing onto other layers. You have to click on every single layer every time you want to move it. Uh, there we go. And you have to grab it like right by the text. So put that there and it kind of glitches when you move it around but you know it, it doesn't matter it's not going to show up in your final project so let's duplicate this and change this to black uh, da, da, da. then we're going to move it no you move just this and you're going to put that on the bottom and boom you got yourself some 3D text, and I believe that's pretty much it. There's not much to it, and you can do this over and over again. So you can uh, save this, save as, um, let's see, I'm going to save it to my desktop real quick, and save it as whatever, right? And then if you decide to, let's uh, discard all these changes. If you decide to open it again, like you save it as a template, um, all you have to do is go to your text tool and let's see for example change this to something select all make it white and you know just kind of get in the habit of changing everything to whatever you had it as which I don't know why GIMP doesn't like save everything you do but I guess you get the point I don't know why I did that but uh, thank you guys for watching. It wasn't really that long of a tutorial because it's pretty easy. And then, like I said, you just change the color and you just do this. I mean, you could basically make one from scratch and it literally just takes you a couple of minutes. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like down below and make sure to leave a comment down below if you have any problems. And make sure to click on the screen right now or on the annotation if you want to see this tutorial, which is a bit more different. It's not as... Uh, bland as this but at the same time this is a free software come on free software come on guys come on come on it's like free money right and uh, thanks for watching guys and as always I'll see you in the next video peace out